Hi, I'm Pranav Kumar, and this is my final presentation for ISM. So a little bit about me is I'm a senior here at Frisco High School. I'm only 15 years old. I'm graduating early, so this is actually my third year at Frisco High, and I did come in as a freshman. I am the school mascot. I have been since about September or October time. I have only one pet, and she's adorable. Her name is Peanut. She's an eight-month-old bunny. And I'm never at home because I'm always out, and I like being with my friends and parents, and my grandma especially. And I want to be a spine surgeon when I get out of college. Um, that right there is my rabbit, Peanut, and those are my parents, who I like spending all, most of my time with when I'm out of the house. So the mission statement that I wrote for this course was that I want to be a spine surgeon through the ISM program, and I hope to gain knowledge regarding surgical practice, learn to accommodate and succeed in tackling the daily challenges that arise while being a surgeon, and to understand all aspects of professionalism in the medical field. Through this program, I hope to find a mentor willing to guide me in the field of spine surgery and to develop an understanding of the daily life of a spine surgeon. And I feel like throughout the year, I've been able to accomplish most of what's said in the mission statement. I have found a mentor willing to guide me in the field. I have developed an understanding of the daily life of a spine surgeon, or more like the weekly life, because they have different days where they go to clinic or they go to surgery. And I've been, with the help of Dr. Bradley, learning how to tackle some of the daily challenges that arise with patients or other doctors in the hospital. The quote that I chose this year was, from Michelangelo and it is, the greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. I chose this quote because I feel like it really represents the ISM program and that whatever you want to do with this program, you can set your goals for and achieve your mark. But if you feel you can't do much in this course and this course doesn't have much to offer you, if you achieve your mark just by doing that, then you haven't gotten the full potential out of this course. So why I took ISM was I heard about it at lunch from my friend Sophia, and she said she really loved the class, and she enrolled in it because she could study something she wanted to do. And I thought if I could study spine surgery, which is what I want to be, that this class would be right for me. So some of the experience I had before ISM was volunteering at Dallas Medical Center. Uh, it was really easy for me to volunteer here even though I was underage because uh, my mom is actually the CEO of the hospital. So for the past four or five summers, I've been going to Dallas Medical Center and shadowing different doctors. Through the program that they have, they're called the Ambassador Program, I've been able to shadow uh, spine surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons, plastic surgeons, anesthesiologists, and I've worked in the ER, the OR, and the Trauma Care Center. My topic of study, because of uh, all my experience at Dallas Medical Center, is I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon narrowed down to specializing in spine surgery. Some of the research that I did through the first semester, uh, I really didn't know what to do for my research, so I kind of went into Google and really just looked up spine surgery to see what would come up in the news, and I found some really interesting things that I've narrowed my topics down to. The first one being stem cells in the heart. Uh, the promise of stem cell therapies is closer to reality was the title of the article, and stem cells have been controversial for the past 20-ish years, and they've been promised to be put into the medical field, but the only time stem cells were really ever used is with burn victims, and it helps regenerate their skin back to normal. But this was one of the special cases where uh, the doctors were allowed to use stem cells through the patient's consent. This was a 31-year-old man who was really physically active, loved going out with his family and kids. Uh, his, he did yoga, bike riding, ran every morning until one day when he was 31, I think it was in September of 2014, he had a heart attack. And one-third of his left ventricle was blocked. And the left ventricle is actually responsible for bringing in oxygenated blood from your lungs. So this was really restricting the blood flow, blood flow through the rest of his body and was not allowing him to be physical like he enjoyed so much. Two thirds of that one third block was actually cured with the use of stem cells and going in and destroying the tissue and regener regenerating them back to the original vein and artery cells. The second main focus that I saw this year was man walks again 
which was another big thing. A man named Derek Fittico was mugged, I think, six years ago. And he was stabbed in the spine, and he lost all feeling from his waist down. He couldn't walk. He was in a wheelchair. But scientists found out that through the use of your olfactory bulbs, which is responsible for your sense of smell, they are the fastest regenerating nerve cells in your entire body because of you smelling so much throughout the day. He has now regained feeling in his legs and his feet. He started able to walk again with the help of a walker and wheelchairs and things like that. I think now, since this was back in October, he's able to walk with crutches, which is very impressive for someone who's been paralyzed from the waist down. And I think through research like this, we'd be able to cure people who have seemed incurable, such as Stephen Hawking. The third big thing that I found was 3D printing. And most people thought 3D printing was just really cool because you can make like cubes or circles through your printer, but it's been used a lot more than that with the use of titanium in the 3D printer. Uh, the Chinese boy who's 12 years old, his name is Ming Hao, was playing soccer out with a bunch of his friends and he was a really active little kid until one day he was playing soccer and he headed the ball to try to get a goal and his neck, he felt something snap in his neck and he collapsed and his friends told his mom and his mom rushed him to the hospital where he was blacked out for three days. And doctors found out that he had a tumor in his third vertebra, which is in your neck, and the doctors could not get to the tumor without removing a vertebra. So what they did was they 3D printed the um, cervical vertebra that the tumor was behind and they actually removed his entire vertebra, pulled out the tumor and put in a titanium one, all with the help of a 3D printer during the surgery. found out this was really impressive because now that it's been done in China, it's been actually done all over the world now, such as Brazil, even in the United States and Canada. And with the help of 3D printers and advancing technology in this field, I feel like we can make a huge impact in the next five to 10 years to come with the use of 3D printing and stem cells. So my first interview in my steps to finding a mentor was with Dr. Samir Parikh, or Dr. Sammy. He was a family friend of ours. He's close by. He only lives like five minutes from here, and his practice is only like 10 minutes in the other direction. I found he was really interesting because he worked in jeans, cowboy boots, and a cowboy hat, which is unusual for a doctor, and the only time he ever changes out of that is when he's wearing scrubs. He gave me a lot of insightful information into the field, and he's actually a family practice doctor, so he doesn't work in a hospital. He has his own little practice, and he does his surgeries, and everything fits to his schedule, and every, everything is the way he wants it to be because he owns his business. And this really gave me two different choices, whether I wanted to do something like that or work in a place like a hospital where you can help more people. My second interview was with Dr. Daniel Bradley. She was, he was recommended to me by a friend named Peyton Sean. He's an acclaimed doctor, works with Texas Back Institute, which is one of the biggest spinal surgery companies in Texas. He's close by. He works at Forest Park Medical Center, which is only 10 minutes down the road. It's right by the FC Dallas Stadium. And he's actually my friend's dad, Lauren Bradley. So it made this um, really easy to talk to him in the interview, given that I was close friends with his daughter. He gave me a lot of information, given he was my second interview, and a lot of insight into what it was like working in a hospital and with a company of spine surgeons. My third interview was actually helped set up by Coach Goff. And he had a really negative outlook on the spinal field. He said, you know, don't be a doctor, leave alone a spine surgeon. It's a terrible field, don't go into it. I regret my job, I don't like my life. I'm always at work, never at time, never time to go home and spend time with my kids or my wife. He hated it, he said it was a dying field and that no one was gonna need to be a doctor in the future because everything would be taken over by machines, I guess. Which I thought was a little over dramatic, but I took a positive outlook on this interview and said, Maybe he did this because he had no choice. Maybe he was forced by his parents uh, to be a doctor. And maybe a doctor was something that he really didn't want to be. And I think he only cared about being a doctor for the money and not for helping people. So it took, I took this to heart because I really want to be a doctor to help people and not for the money. 
Dr. Peloza was my fourth interview. He actually works with Dr. Bradley. He also works with Texas Back Institute. And the thing I really liked about Dr. Peloza was he goes on mission trips every summer to places in Africa or Asia just to help the people in need. And he doesn't do it for the money, and he really does it with Texas Back Institute does it as well. And he goes around with different doctors, and he just helps fix people who can't afford it. He invited me to a conference by a Dr. Isaac Moss, who came down from the University of Connecticut to talk about stem cells, which is something that really interests me. And it was a one and a half hour conference out at Plano Presbyterian. And we just sat down and I got to hear all the different doctors asking questions and debating over this such a controversial subject and this professor describing what he thought spine, or stem cells could do with the spine surgery field. My fifth interview was with Dr. Douglas Wan, who is actually quite far away. He works in South Dallas, but he owns his own company. He quit being a spine surgeon because he felt no need for it anymore, and he actually went into business. And now he owns his own spinal surgery center, and he hired like three or four different spine surgeons, and he goes around and he taught all four of them. And now he manages them and he brings in his own patients and clients and everything like that. His company is called Spine Care, right here at the bottom. And he was a highly recommended doctor to me by my mother because my mother used to work closely with him. And he gave me a lot of information. Our interview went for like two and a half hours and he invited me to his house. And we sat down and we talked. And I think my parents got a little bad at me because they were sitting in the car for two and a half hours. <laughs> but I really liked this interview with Dr. Ron because it was very insightful in the field and he told me about how to run a business and how what business could do with spine surgery and that when I go to college I should minor in business just to be able to put my input in as a spine surgeon. Uh, this is my mentor and I, Dr. Bradley. He, I like him because he shares a lot of values with me and believes in patient doctor equality and he doesn't believe that he is above the patient, he actually believes the patient is above him. And he has no sense of arrogance at all. He believes whatever the patient wants to do, he will do, but he will only give his input if the patient wants it. And he feels he should do what's right for the patient and what's best for the patient only if the patient wants it. He has two locations in Frisco itself, and they're both over by FC Dallas. He has a location in Plano and a location in Denton. So he's really all over the place every week, and it's a great opportunity every time I'm able to go out and meet with him. Uh, some of the highlights of my mentorship with him have been the conferences he takes me to either every Friday or every other Friday. Uh, and then they have this thing they do after the conferences called questionable cases and some of the doctors, about 10 or 11 of them, all sit down in a big conference room and they have their Apple TV and they have pictures of all their cases on their phone and they just broadcast it up to the TV with all the pictures of the MRIs and x-rays and things like that and they ask the other doctors what they would do in that certain situation. And after all the doctors have done debating it and they come to a final conclusion, the doctor tells what he, would have, what he did in that case and uh, what he could have done better and why he did it. Another huge highlight was actually recently on Wednesday. Uh, Dr. Bradley let me come in and watch a surgery with him and there's me and Scrubs sitting there. That's right before the operation. I just got to sit down and watch a three and a half hour operation of a woman who had hardware in her spine but they had to replace the hardware. So the case was a little complicated given the woman was slightly obese and that is really hard for the doctors because they have to get through the tissue, through the fat, and through everything that the woman has in her back before they can actually get to the hardware. And the hardware is being damaged by the woman's weight. So it was really interesting to sit there and see these two doctors sit and, and how they solved this case. For my original work, I decided to make a website to inform people of the few common spine surgeries and some information of the post-op recovery and the rehabilitation. So this is what my website looks like. It's got a lovely spine on the front and it says what this website is and what can be found on this website. Uh, there's three different procedures I have currently on there, spinal fusion, disc herniation, and disc decompression. 
Uh, a spinal fusion is where they fuse two parts of your spine, or two vertebrae of your spine together if you have scoliosis or lordosis or kyphosis. With a disc herniation, it's the discs in between your vertebra. One of them uh, actually opens up and lets all your cerebrospinal fluid out, which is bad for your disc and bad for your spine because you lose posture, it's very painful, and you can't perform daily activities. And a decompression is when the disc actually bloats up and the doctor has to go in and make sure it gets back to normal size. So for spinal fusion, this is just a basic understanding of what the spinal fusion is and what it does. And there's three subpages on there, complications, rehabilitation, and surgery. So the complications is what can happen before spinal fusion and the complications during the surgery and complications after the surgery and how you know you have or you need a spinal fusion. The rehabilitation is what happens in rehab or it kind of describes what happened during the surgery and uh, what you can do to better or to accelerate your rehabilitation. And the surgery, which is the last part, just explains exactly what goes on in the surgery and the different techniques they use to do it. A little more about my original work. The website is up and live, and I will continue to update it throughout college and med school and everything. And this is actually the website down at the bottom, if you ever do want to go there. It's just sites.google.com slash site slash learn about spine. So for my product, I wanted to create an iPhone app that teaches patients how to rehabilitate at home. This is going to be a free app, and all the information will come from the physician. Uh, how it changed a little bit through uh, me trying to actually make the app, it will not be an iPhone app because I found that I don't own a Mac, and the only way to code an iPhone app is to buy and use a Mac. So I'm just going to make it either on an Android or make it on a computer website and the user interface is going to look exactly the same. Uh, these are the two programs that I've actually used to make the animations. The first one's called Make Human, which gives you a perfectly anatomically correct human that you can design to any specifications that you want. And the second application is called Blender, which is the animation tool that I'm using. Uh, a lot of the animations actually use an exercise ball, which is slightly hard for me to animate, and I still haven't found out how to do that yet, but I've been able to do basic things, such as the trainer touching her toes, and the trainer being able to run, walk, sit down, stand up, uh, pick up boxes, things like that. Uh, it does look a little complicated, but Blender lets you use all three different axes. As you can see, the red line is the x-axis, the blue line is the y-axis and any other blue lines you see on there, and the green line is the z-axis, so it lets you work in all three dimensions and make anything you want. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little pyramid thing right here, and that's actually the camera, and there's a little circle up here in the corner, and that's the lamp and which way you want the light to go. So the purpose of my product is to help those wanting to get better on their own at home and to help people strengthen their spine even if they don't need rehabilitation. Some things ISM has done for me, it's helped me develop people skills and it's piqued a lot of my interests in the spinal field. I've been able to learn some interests that I've had in stem cells and that's really what I want to do in college. I'm going to focus on research and stem cells and how I can help with curing people with stem cells. It's given me experience further than I've already had in the medical field and given me the opportunity to work with acclaimed doctors and have my own mentor and it's helped me open a door into the professional world and shown me what needs to be done for in order for me to become a doctor and help patients the best to my ability. How I've changed through ISM is I feel like I've become slightly a better speaker than I was before. I'm a really shy person when I'm up on stage and I'm terrified of public speaking. Uh, it's helped me become a better interviewer because I feel like talking to people, I'm able to throw the conversation in any way I want to and I'm able to hold control of anything that needs to be talked about. I'm less afraid to talk to strangers now. I'm able to just approach professionals and ask any question I want to, whereas before I used to be really shy and not wanting to talk to anyone. And through ISM, it's showed me what I really want to do. 
Um, some of my future plans, I haven't decided what I want to major in. As of now, it's sitting at biology, but I want to either major at biology or biochemistry at UT Dallas. I'm going to attend UT Dallas for the first year, and I don't know if I want to stay after that or probably go out of state somewhere. I'm going to focus on research throughout my entire college. I'm planning on taking five years and taking one of those years just to focus solely on research. And after college, I want to live in a rural area because I don't like the city or the suburbs. And I want to live in like a nice, quiet area with a big like land plot and house. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any questions? No? Thank you for your time. <laughs>